So please welcome onto the stage. He's heard this once or twice. Please welcome to the stage, Tabakata. Hey, hey, hey Paul, how are you? I'm really well. What, what do you normally have when you come onto the stage? Yeah, you said it just like that, except people pronounce my name 15 different ways, but you did it great. <laughs> I remember from last time. I remember from last time. But do you, do you have a, a, a like a, a a real sort of high energy track that gets played as well? A favorite of yours? You, you want to hear something funny that I think expats might enjoy? Like so much of my comedy is about being an immigrant. That uh, a lot of times I play the Led Zeppelin immigrant song. <laughs> okay, as you come. On. Well, let's start there, shall we? It's so great to have you back. Thank Top you. Great to be US back. US comic Tama Katan is here, everybody. I'm really, really looking forward to this chat because I was watching some you, you on YouTube yesterday. You're a hilarious man. Oh, thank and you. Your beginnings. Uh, a Jewish and Arab parents, um, it brought up in a, a Mexican neighborhood in America. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, yeah. that's a rich theme. That's a rich theme of material. How was that? Uh, it was, you know, it's really funny. It's one of those things, just like so many other things. When you're a kid, the things that you think are so bad end up being the things that you love when you get older. I mean, I didn't even like my name when I was a kid. Like I, I could, you know, in America, we have these license plates so you could buy at toy stores you could put on the back of your bicycle. And, and every time we went to the toy store, like an idiot, I would just go, where's Tamar? And there was, there was <laughs> <laughs> one time I found a Tamara and I cut out the A. And, oh yeah but then the kids realized it and they were they started like shaming me oh no <laughs> that's, that's not like children at all is it oh they're brutal they're, the kids <laughs> are the worst all right so we, we do we see you in lisbon now you are you have you made a home here in portugal now yeah i've made a home and my, my wife decided to paint our bedroom entirely pink so this nice. is uh this is the den of emasculinity like <laughs> yes yes yeah we, we love it though we love love lisbon and i've made some unexpected um friendships and unexpected progress in terms of comedy um i was i mistakenly assumed that i was going to have to be on the road quite a bit and i wasn't going to be able to do comedy uh in lisbon and there, there's been a nice surprise that's uh, happened um uh, since we last spoke that's made me uh, have the ability to be home a lot more often which has made my life a lot better Oh, excellent. So, well, let's rewind a bit on that then. So, because the idea was to come to Portugal, right, and tour the whole European comedy circuit. Yeah. But the, the pandemic was a bit of a blow to that plan. Uh, yeah. what, 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 what was that like? And, and how did you ad adapt in the early days? Well, it's funny because when we first got here, I assumed, I mean, the, the, the what I told my wife is, I said, you know, let's be patient um, from now, meaning summer, till the end of the year, the calendar is going to control me and I'm going to be on the road quite a bit. And I go, but from December forward, hopefully I will have uh, made enough contacts and had enough people in the European scene know that I'm not just here visiting. I live here now and that hopefully I'll be able to have a career. Um, yeah. the, the nice thing that happened is unexpectedly uh, a, a quite famous comedian named Eliza Schlesinger um, knew me from Los Angeles. I used to babysit her dog when she'd go on stage. Uh, she had a dog named Blanche that she named after one of the Golden Girls. Oh, and, sweet. Uh, really sweet dog. So Eliza is this huge comedian. Uh, and so I got to open for her at the biggest stages, um, uh, including a huge theater in Lisbon and, uh, and the Apollo in London, which is just amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was really cool. I actually secret between all of us. I stole the doorstop in the in the uh, dressing room. Very good. <laughs> it's a filthy, it's a filthy piece of wood, but and I thought it was harmless, so I stole it. Uh, but because I opened for her, uh, a big uh, comedian from Portugal saw me, a, a quite famous comedian in Portugal who is friends uh, with a guy that owns the the only proper comedy club, Lisboa Comedy Club. Um, mm also happens to be the manager of the biggest talent agency uh, in the country. <laughs> Turned out okay then. <laughs> yeah, so I got really fortunate. And uh, we, we had a lot of discussions. He had me come into the club and perform. Uh, I basically got this conversation with the comics there saying, listen, we are too small of a community to be competing against each other when we should be cooperating. And yes. I said, selfishly, I, I need the scene to, to elevate its level and so that more people come uh, to shows and that we keep developing as comedians so I don't have to be on the road so much and I can see my wife and my cat more often. So, 
So I started having writing groups and helping uh, local guys with uh, local guys and girls with their comedy. And they started helping each other. And because uh, comedy is a strange thing. It, it, it's like boxing where you think that you're a lone person in a ring. Mm -hmm. But what you realize is when that person comes out of the ring, there's a whole team that's involved. Yeah. yeah. And that's very much what comedy is like. A lot of comedians, they graduate in classes. They don't graduate alone. That's why Louis C.K. knows Chris Rock so well. And Chris Rock knows Dave Chappelle. And all those guys know each other because yeah. they they work together on the, on the way up. And so yeah. it's, it feels like I'm not just here and I found a job. It feels like we're creating a scene. And yeah. uh, so every Sunday night, Lisboa Comedy Club has uh, an English speaking comedy night that starts at eight and goes to the early hours. And uh, for two hours before that, all the writers sit together and we perform our comedy to each other and treat it like a writer's room, just like you would at a TV show. So it's, oh. been, it's been a fantastic experience and I've gotten a lot more shows at home. My wife's happier, my cat's happier and, uh, and I'm more happy. It's, it's nice to be in Lisbon more often. That's just superb. So, I mean, it must've been quite scary at first thinking, you know, oh, yeah. you're, your, your career actually was brought to a, a sudden end in a way or your or the beginnings of your European career, certainly. Yeah. You know, it's funny, Carl. I I, I mean, I, I fell deeply in love with this woman over Bumble. You know, I love Anna. She's amazing. But there was a fear in the back of my head that I was going to resent her, you know, because I left this. <laughs> You know, I really love. You know, okay, it's true. Because I, 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 I didn't know, like, comedy is not just a job to me. It was my, it's my sense of identity. So for yeah. a lot, it's not like when I don't go to work, you can tell I, I, I look different. You know, I, yes. I'm more anxious. I'm, I'm more. I don't know. There's something about it that psychologically is really healthy for me. And so yeah. uh, I, I was. There was a fear in the back of my head that I was going to resent her for making me move. Right. Yes. And. uh but it, but that absolutely not the case. I actually feel more excited about yeah. comedy here. And I had someone in the audience come up to me and say something I thought was really great. This guy came up to me and he said, you know, I'm a huge comedy fan. I know Dave Chappelle is better than you. And I, and first of, in my brain, I was like, <laughs> like, okay, this is a very unusual compliment, but thank you. Okay. I, I know yes. it too. <laughs> and he goes, but the difference is, but you made me laugh more than he did. And I was oh, like, what? what? And he yes. said, whenever Dave Chappelle comes to Europe, he doesn't bring comedy for Europe. He brings comedy from America. He's and I'm getting wow. secondhand wow. jokes about a life in America. He's but the fact that you're talking about life here and you're talking about things that I can relate to makes me like your comedy more. And I that's was like, wow. right. Yeah, it was the yeah. biggest compliment in the world. That is really, that's very, very special, isn't it? And I, yeah. I, they're, they're, there are a couple of things in that. I mean, uh, yes, Dave Chappelle, I uh, have a great admiration for Dave Chappelle. Uh, uh, among other comedians at the moment, because something interesting is happening uh, sociologically in the world um, as we live in these craziest of times. And you see this with Dave Chappelle, don't you? The man has become a philosopher um, yeah. and social commentator. Like him or not, you know, he is, he, it's been left to him, it would appear, um, and other comedians to almost wrestle with the social conscience um, yeah. at, at the risk of their careers. But it, 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 it's something fascinating is going on, isn't it? That, it, that we've got to this, that yeah. the, the people you used to go to see to give you a good laugh are still doing that, hopefully, but they're yeah. really making you think as well. I mean, it, am I right with that? Is this, is this a phenomenon at the moment? hundred percent. I think you're absolutely correct. And I also think that it, it that is a huge beam of hope because if yeah. you think about it, it's not that, that comedians are saying anything different than most people. It's that the comedians have the ability to put their soldiers inside a Trojan horse. So, <laughs> yes. You know yes. what I mean? I so do. it looks like you're receiving a joke. It looks like you're receiving a gift, but inside that joke is someone's opinion. And yeah. I think what that means is that people are open to, to, to looking at different perspectives, to hearing different things. Is, is, and that, that barrier isn't as as uh, as big of a wall or, or, or requires as long of a drawbridge as we originally thought, whether you agree with, with Chappelle's viewpoints or not. Like, I think that the idea of, of making someone laugh first, and I think making someone laugh first is almost a reminder that we're human beings first. So true. And then so after true. that, being able to, to say, hey, here's my perspective and, and let's hear yours. And it's, it's OK that we have a different opinion. Yeah, and I think in many ways um, it's so important that the, the what, you know the broadest sense I use the word culture, but the arts, you know, how an entertainment 
provide this for us in hard times because um, at the best of times, entertainment and culture just seems to go a bit dry and corporate, doesn't it? And you would hope in difficult times, that's where the music, that's where the comedians step yeah. out onto the stage and say, look, have you thought about this? Yeah. And people go, and, and, and really the, the, the reaction should be, no, we don't want to hear that. And then they go, hold on a minute, maybe do, we do want to hear that. Maybe that guy is right. Maybe these, what these musicians are saying is right here. Yeah. And it's coming in through music, through laughter. But I don't think the musicians are there with it. I think it's with the comedians at the moment. Yeah, I agree. I think you're absolutely right. I think being a, a comedian today is almost like being a musician during the Vietnam War. Yes, or in the eighties. In the, 80s, in the yeah. I know you know my my, my perspective context is eighties uh, Britain, and it was with the music that you know so working class people found. Um, well, in any depression, music is so important to people to for fun, but also there's the added level, the intellectual level of challenging ideas in music. But where are the musicians now? Is it just that we're too old to, to, to know and hear them? Or are they, not, are they not doing their job at the moment? No, they're there. I, I think it's just that they're being drowned out by the, the amplification and magnification of the problems that we're all having right now. I think yes. the media has figured out uh, that you can profitize fear yes. and, and anxiety. And, and that bad news just travels so quickly. The one thing that I really like, it, it really is the golden age of lying right now, isn't it? You know, it's the golden age of lying. It's, it's the golden age of stupidity. It's the golden age of just like my opinion is more important than, than reality. But there's a, there's a saying I really like. It's, it's an old like Buddhist saying. And it says, uh, there are only three things uh, that can stay hidden for a short time. The sun, the moon, and the truth. Yes. And I, I think like it, as big as lying is getting that the, the truth always comes out. It always does. E yeah. Even like I know it seems right now that the people who lie about things and, and misinform people are getting away with it. But Karma's very good at her job. And <laughs> she's very good. Yeah. Where, do you think she, where does Karma see herself in five years time, do you think? If we're uh, talking know, about think... jobs. I, I think we live in an interesting time, but I think we forget that the internet is still new. In, in yeah. the context of the human experience, the internet is still new. Like it's 15 years, I think, not that much. And like 15 years after we discovered fire, we weren't searing tuna, <laughs> right? We were still lighting our houses on fire by accident, right? Like that's, and I think that's what we're doing now. I, I think that we're course correcting. We, we created the internet. It was a beautiful thing in the beginning and it, it, does what always happens with humanity. We, we take it in an ugly direction and, and yep. we will course correct. And I think the people that have their hands on that steering wheel is the next gener next generation. Wow. Yes, well said. Fantastic. I didn't expect yeah. to be talking to you this deeply this morning, but I'm so glad we are. Well, this, <laughs> this mustache is, is uh, practically a beard. So there's wisdom <laughs> on this upper lip. Practically a beard. That's a great review of your moustache. Sometimes your luck is just around the corner. Uh, Tamba got his break. That's spiraling into success. I love what's happened for you uh -huh. here and your oh, contribution. You. you know, you, you, you're definitely my favourite kind of expat. Uh, I call oh. them expats 2.0. And people coming to Portugal, it's so important that, yeah, yes, come here to enjoy this amazing country. Yeah. But th there are so many people coming now who want to give something to the culture as well as enjoy something from it. And you've, I mean, you've, done, you've hit the ground running with that, with your contribution to the comedy circuit by the side oh, of Thank it. you. That's really nice. I, I mean, I, I think I've, I've really been lucky, though. And thank you. Is it Deagle? Deagle? Yes, yeah, Deagle. 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 Yeah. That's such a cool name. Thank it you is. for the comment. That's, that's such a nice thing to say. I, I really appreciate that. Um, there's a guy that I met here named Nelson Fernandez, who's the owner of the Lisboa Comedy Club. And I think like, you know, it was it was him who he who approached he who approached me. Well, it sounds like a romance novel. Uh, he's the one who approached me and said, did he, hey, drop his handkerchief? did he drop his handkerchief on the floor so that you could put it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. It's whenever I speak to English people, I, I, I drop into a uh, language from the theater. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. <laughs> I told this to one of my friends before. He said, oh, you know, what's it like speaking English, English with British people? I'm like, it's like having a conversation uh, in, but the British people are speaking in cursive and the Americans <laughs> are speaking, and, but when Americans speak, it's as if someone's writing with a crayon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
okay. Oh, yeah. see, but we got some lo lots of lovely comments for you this morning. Uh, the and, and, and commentary here. The wonderful writer James Baldwin said, "Artists are here to disturb the peace. Comedy is an art." Well said, Rebel Mama. I love um, that. And I love your yeah. name and your hair too. Uh, yeah, she 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 is awesome, a Rebel Mama, as the name suggests. Uh, George Carlin was a master of comedically rapping the truth about the Vietnam War and other political uh, other political issues. Absolutely. Well said. I actually yes. met his daughter. You want to hear something crazy? I met his daughter at a comedy show one time, uh, Kelly Carlin, and it was a it was a political show for this place uh, called the Basil Arts uh, Group in Venice Beach, California. I didn't know who she was. I did my set and she was following me. As I was coming off stage, she whispered into my ear. She goes, you son of a B. I don't know if it's okay to say the B word here. She goes, you, you're a son of a B. And I just looked at her and I was stunned. And then she went up and she goes, I'm not a comedian. I'm just going to read from my book. She's like, but wasn't he great? And then the audience applauded. And at the time we were doing Trump jokes. And turns out it was Kelly Carlin and she was reading from her dad's book. Wow. And then after the show, she goes, wait, I don't want you to leave. I have something for you. And she gave me a copy of her book. It's called Carlin Family Matters. And then she she autographed the book and said, if my dad met you, he would have loved your comedy. Oh, was, isn't that precious? Yeah. So is, it, get is, that, is that next to your Apollo doorstop on yeah. your shrine of great comedians? Things. Uh, and I, I, I didn't ask you about that. I mean, that is one of the greatest comedy stages of the world, isn't it? The Hammersmith Apollo. What, it really what, is. I mean, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a teenager, I went to see bands play there, you know, yeah. and I saw some amazing bands at Hammersmith Odeon, as it was called then, and it's now the Apollo. What was it like to step onto that stage? Oh, you, it's so validating. You know, it's a really, it's a really interesting thing, especially nowadays. Speaking about, you know, uh, the time that we're living in, the time that we're living in right now is comedy is a craft. And it yeah. takes, you know, 10 years to find your voice. It's a really interesting thing. It's like your comedic taste is here, but your comedic yeah. ability is here. And okay. that, that's the frustration of a writer. Until those two things match up, you don't really find your voice. You want to yeah. say this, but you can't until you learn for it to match up. So yeah. what's happening in comedy right now is there's a lot of people who are becoming famous online from Instagram followers or YouTube followers. But then when they put them on stage, which is a different craft then then the experience isn't great for the audience so it was really validating to have met someone like an eliza schlesinger eight years ago have her remember me and and know that i'm a strong comic and and bring me on to the apollo so backstage i was standing back there and i mean my nerves i'll be on i was trembling <laughs> you know it was five thousand yeah. people who were five thousand people not there to see me yeah <laughs> right yes you know, so, it was almost like being the free appetizer at a restaurant where people are coming in for a specific dish. You know, I was the chips and so I was the opening band for the Beatles. That's what it felt like. <laughs> so, wow. but she was so kind and so wonderful. And she said, you know, I want you to do more time because I think you're great. So instead of the traditional 10 minutes, she had me do 25 minutes in front of 5,000 wow. people. And it was and it was amazing. I mean, they la every joke landed, every joke hit. There's a mantra that I say on the way up to the stage, and, and it's the word play. And, and, and be grateful and remember that this isn't a job. This is a, a gift. And so that's, that's what I try to do when I go on stage. I just remind myself that this is the greatest job in the world and that, yes. uh, and that I'm, I'm there to play and have a good time and, and, and remind everybody else to laugh. And I think that it was contagious, not just the jokes, but I think my energy is what, what they felt and what what made me get through that 25 minutes in a breeze. I can imagine. And I, I think there's, I, I don't know, I, I want to say you've earned that, obviously, because, you, you know, the, you're talking about that gap between how people think they are and how they show up on stage. And, and that those things have to be brought together, don't they? And yeah. there's no other way to do that except to do that, right? You, exactly. you, so you've been, I mean, you've had your, you, that beautiful, I can feel it, you know, that, that beautiful moment, the crowning glory of, of, of being on the, the Apollo stage. Yeah. But that had, behind that are all the other times you've been on stage, right? Where you've had yeah. to just show up and face the slings and arrows of the comedic uh, trajectory. <laughs> and, and then that's not always pleasant, presumably. It is, it is. But there's, when you've, it, it, all the stuff, all the shows that you don't want to have, all yeah. the shows that you hate, where you go home feeling bad about yourself, or you go home wishing they would have applauded more, those yeah. are the shows that prepared me for the Apollo, not the good shows. The yeah. shows where I got a standing ovation or I had people say, you're the best. 
those shows didn't help me. It's all the wow. shows that I didn't want. All the yeah. shows that, that made me doubt myself, those are the ones that prepared me for the Apollo. And when the show ended, I had either a 45 minute train ride back uh, home or a two and a half hour walk. And I picked the walk. It Did was, uh, I was so full of adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, superb, superb. And these are transferable ideas, are they not? I mean, that's that's life as well, isn't it? Showing yeah. up, you're stepping into what you really are and, and facing the good and the bad of how life responds to you is, is what makes us, right, in, in the greatest... 100%. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, it's so funny. A lot of times people are like, oh, this is a new chapter in your life. I'm like, this is a new book. It's not a new chapter. It's like it's an entirely new book. And it, I think it's one of the gifts of being an expat is that yeah. you... You get uh, it's being an expat is literally the definition of saying, if I only knew then what I know now. <laughs> it's, it's, isn't it? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it, there's no, there's no, there's no coincidence that th this room is pink because you're being reborn, possibly from a big, <laughs> a big womb. <laughs> okay. James, James, like Bruce, Carly, Rock, so many have used the Trojan horse at least since the late 1950s. Thank God for comedians. Totally agree. Okay. In their raw form are truth tellers they are the original data network applying critical thinking to the masses breaking down information into ones and zeros so people can look. check that out that's quite an analogy. yes nice one chris um seems a lot of like a lot of corporate music yeah and i think um, we're, we're possibly in agreement about where music's at at the moment uh, or, or we don't know about the music that is shaking the, the system from, from uh, beneath the surface at least in portugal we can still laugh about anything says elra except jesus I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about that i've seen I actually some made them i actually said a, a joke about god and they laughed yeah i'm sure i'm sure it's, it's, it's all about the the audience isn't it as she's saying here, if you mess with jesus the geriatric brigade will be in an uproar and flood you with criticizing mail i can imagine as says you are that lisbon might appear like a small country village compared to the huge american cities hence the reason i'm delighted that uh tama was able to start a new happy life here. So that's from a Portuguese. Uh, thank you, Joao. I actually, I almost met Joao in Porto last time I was there. I, oh, if excellent. I remember. Yeah, I think yep. Joao is the Joao I, I chatted with. I actually met several of your listeners last time I performed in Porto. It was real. Oh, One of them I bumped into great. on a bridge. It was great. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, yeah. Point taken, uh, but the internet is a bit older. I had my first dial-up service around 26 years ago. <laughs> When one of my kids was a babe, that is actually it. That's, that's material. That's that. <laughs> uh, but black music is all political. Listen to grime or drill, Carl. Absolutely, I mean, you know, I, I'm a, a black music fan to, 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 to my very, very roots. Uh, all the way in London, like I'm saying, you know, I, I, who have I seen at the Hammersmith Odeon? There, Mays, I think. May, Frankie Beverly and Mays, you know, there, there, in, there is lies um, philosophy as well. They don't, they don't write them like that anymore. Uh, John Candy was my second city improv teacher. Mike crazy. Myers was a guy. What? Who was 15 crazy. years old. Sean, I bet Mike Myers did shine at 15. Robin Williams asked to join us one day and stole the class with his riffing, as you might expect. Suze, wow. It's so um, cool. These things you don't know about people. I would love to see you in Portugal when we get there. Do you have a website, Tamo? I also love Lewis Black as well as a longtime fan of George Collins. Oh, that's so great. Oh, oh. Uh, is that the, way, the best way to keep in touch with you then is your, your Instagram there? Instagram Telegram. is best. Yeah, I actually plugged it in my name. Look at as if I, I, I'm a professional person. Look at that. I, I was impressed. I, was, I think that's great. If that's the way for people to keep in touch with you and your tour, that is exactly what they should do, right? Yeah, that's the best way. Like, that's my social handle, and I, I update that in, in real time. Um, yeah. There's some really big things and exciting things that are going to be happening in, in Portugal soon that I'm very hopeful and excited for. Some of those things, including a lot of pretty famous comics from the New York and Los Angeles scene who've been watching me over here thanks to social media who are now like hey i want to come visit and i've got oh, i've got a spare yes. bedroom that's going to have some famous heads sleeping on a couch that's incredible isn't it yeah. and you can still steal some of their things and put it next to the doorstop and, and exactly it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be amazing your, your shrine is just going to get bigger and bigger each season i'm um, like a comedy raccoon if it's shiny i'm taking it 
<laughs> love that. It's a new book. Uh, that's definitely yeah. how we feel. Yes, and a lovely transferable there to the expat life. Thank you for that, Tama. Uh, love Chappelle, love Rock, love Bernie Mac, and Catherine Ryan is just amazing. Too. I've just discovered Cat Williams as well. I've been oh, late to that party. <laughs> He's if electric. you guys want to see something amazing, one of the yeah. most inspiring and amazing things I've ever seen is Bernie Mac at the Apollo in New York, the Apollo in Harlem. Okay. Yeah. And there was a show when he was, it was his Apollo moment for his Apollo. And yeah. at the time, this is like the 80s, and every comic before him was bombing. And Bernie Mac walked up and he repeated one phrase during his set. He said, I ain't scared of you. And then he had the DJ up top. He would tell a joke and say, you don't understand. I ain't scared of you. And then he'd tell a joke. They'd laugh and he'd point to the DJ and the DJ would start playing music. And then it, that was the rhythm. He, he took control back from an audience that was booing every comic. It was yeah. such, it was, it was almost like the, the, the Greek soldiers fighting the Persians. Persian. Yes. One yes. man. Was like, Sparta. Was, it was Sparta beautiful. It was beautiful. <laughs> so if, if anybody wants to see it, it's Bernie Mac. I ain't scared of you. It's one of the most amazing five minutes of comedy. Don't uh, go there yet, folks. Yeah, we will check that out later. That's fantastic. Later, yeah, yeah. Later, yeah, to, yeah. To, to, to finish off with, oh, it's not that well. I've been to Porto for years, so a pleasure, a pleasure to have in the future. And is he talking about Catherine Ryan's jeans there? I'm not sure. Um, and um, I'm so surprised there are so few jewels in Portugal. Says James, <laughs> there. there's there's a bit more material. So I think you helped you out with another jewel. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> How has it how has it been then the, the or how much no, more material is coming from the expat experience? Tell me about that. As oh as my gosh, it. so much! I mean, I, you know what's really fun? I, I'm I'm very proud to be part of the expat community. You know, when I was a kid, this is I I proudly write on my Instagram third time immigrant, and it, it's interesting because when we first immigrated from Egypt to America, a lot of people's immigrant immigration experiences go through the lens of religion. A lot of people meet at churches or meet at temples. And because my family's background was Muslim and Jewish, we couldn't go to either one or else it would cause problems at home with either parent. So we didn't, we didn't really have that. So, and I always battled, like, what am I? Am I American? Am I Egyptian? And I finally came to, came to peace when I realized I was this thing in the middle that didn't have a name. I was, I was a mix. I was a hybrid. And I yeah. think that's that's the thing with the expat community. I, I think the expat community hasn't had a name before. It hasn't had an identity before. And, and I think it's very much a, a people without a land, a people without a country. And I think that uh, I think the expat community has its own culture and has its own. Uh, we do have a lot of common traits. These are my favorite kinds of people. I mean, these that's, are the people. That's yeah, I, I like the people that started America are the people that had the courage to leave a country and go to another country. It's not the people yeah. that were born there. It's the people that had the courage to leave. And those are my favorite people, the people that are brave and literally pursue happiness. That doesn't yeah. just happen in America. That happens everywhere. And the thunder resonating with this, a hybrid mutt. That's, and me as well, I've got to say, you know, I've got Irish parent, Chinese parent, and now wow. I'm in Portugal. There is something about this phenomenon, isn't there? We, we're yeah. not... We're not really of a flag or a or a nation state, are we? We're of uh, something else. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, maybe you know. The, the, I don't know if you get any heat for this, but the word expat itself is a push button for people. Sure. What are yeah. your thoughts on that? I understand that. Look, it's funny. I I actually had the first time I ever got booed on stage. Uh, yeah. I made a mistake. I said a word that offended uh, people in the audience, and normally comics just say screw the people that are part of cancel culture. I don't, I don't agree with them. Um, I got mugged in New York one time uh, right. by a special needs guy. A special needs yeah. guy pulled a gun on me. And I talked yeah. about that experience. It was a real experience that really happened. And I yeah. said it was a very weird experience to get mugged by a special needs guy because I was simultaneously angry and proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. what happened is it was a very noisy audience. People were interrupting. And, as, and then I, and somebody took issue with me talking about a special needs person. And I said, hey, I don't understand. I, I'm all, the retarded guy had the gun. But when I said it, the word retarded, people got really yeah. offended. And they booed me. And I remember yes. going, no, wait, you guys don't understand. I'm not calling him that name. And I went home and I was going to be mad at the audience. But I stopped. And I said, instead of getting mad at them, let's try to look at, the, look at it from their perspective. And I said, yeah. you know what? They come from a different generation. 
I didn't grow up with terrorism, economic distress, Columbine. Maybe this younger generation isn't sensitive over bad words. Maybe they're just really tired of, of mean people. Yes. And that I can understand. And th for that reason, I changed, I changed the word. And the joke still works great. So I, yeah. I think comics have to, you know, I think it's good to, to get pushed back and to get examined. So if I used to say expat and somebody, had, I'm happy to have a conversation with that person on why that word is wrong. And, yeah. and if it is, then, and I, li I hear them out and I agree with them, then I'll, I'll change it. And I, I actually like immigrant better because there is no difference between what we're doing and what immigrants are doing. Yeah, well said, well said. It's just that we have to rebrand the whole organization if we do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> The you know what kids. my grandfather used to say that I really, really liked? What's it, that? He said, traveling is what we're here for. You're, yeah. if, if, if there is a creator and he put us all on this planet would, and, and he made this beautiful place, it should be our job to travel around and see as much of it as we can and meet people and learn from them. He's so, and, and he used to say this thing that I really love. He would never say, where are you from? He'd always say, where did you start? Oh, superb. Yeah. That, oh, okay. Wow. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, third culture sure. kids. That's the mix of two or more cultures. Yeah, I these. love that. This, this, we're onto something here, aren't we? Bernie Max jeans, not uh, not the, uh, is it Catherine Ryan? That's uh, it, I, yeah. I ain't scared of UMFs. It was truly was a great set and you can watch it again and again and it would generate kinetic energy every time you laugh. Bernie Mac. Um, and uh, no, just about it, says James to Joao. And Sue saying, I, I, in, in Canada, I was a Finn. In Finland, I'm a Canadian. Got to keep moving. So on this wavelength, <laughs> I think, too. Um, and uh, Joao saying, I'm just a relatively newcomer to this community who vibrates with getting acquainted to all oh. these good people. Well, you're, you're so part yeah. of it. Our theme tune, We Are The World, absolutely. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> uh, life is doing things and going places, not getting things. Excellent. Bravo, Thunder Duck. Me as a sense of temporary, uh, whereas immigrant is more permanent, perhaps, says Michelle. And yes, um, sort of permanently temporary as well, if I, if I could add that. Tama, it's been so great to, to have you Thank here. You, I mean, can Thanks we have a fine? Uh, well, uh, you know, you're, you, said, oh, uh, you, you don't have to steal the key because it's yours anyway to come back <laughs> into the studio. Well, thank you so much. And listen, um, and thank you guys for doing this. There's a lot of uh, expat communities out there. I think the one thing that's hard to get. You know, a lot of people always say to me, you know, when you're an expat, what, what are the things that you miss from home? Um, are, are there stores that have it? And they think my answer is going to be Captain Crunch or peanut butter, but it's not. It's, it's community. And like what you guys create here is a great sense of community and, and you know, us knowing that we're not alone and, and knowing that we have other people doing what we're doing is so inspiring and motivating. So thank, thank you guys for, for creating this and and, and thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, Donato, it's a pleasure to do that. And it's a pleasure to have you here. And we hope to see you again Thanks. soon. Tama, when, when can people next see you? That's the big question. Uh, well, we're going to have uh, two shows uh, in December, one in Lisbon at the Lisboa Comedy Club and then yeah. one in Porto. Um, and yeah, if you follow me on Instagram, I'm going to post it later today and, and I'm going to put a, a, a show flyer. Um, it's up on Eventbrite. If you put Tamar Catan plus Lisbon, or if you go to my Instagram, I'm, I'm going to put it up there. And the, the famous Grouse Theater at Lisboa Comedy Club is where we're going to do the show in Lisbon. And then we're going to, and this is late December uh, after yeah. Christmas, I think okay. the 27th. And then the 28th, we're going to do a show at um, Teatro uh, de Sa Bandera in Porto. Okay. It's a beautiful theater space in the studio room. Could be a bit of an expats Portugal get together that one. Yeah, uh, which, I would love that. Best with those, that it's going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, thank you so much for being here, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. We're going to Thanks go and dance. Me, you guys are the best. Take, Take care. care, Thomas. Thank you so much. Bye for now. Thank Bye. you, everybody. We're going to go out with this. <laughs>